I would ask uh, the witness to take a look in uh, the uh, book. We have exhibit for um, identification purposes as you we've been asked to refer to this as Petitioner 6 in the, uh, the book. See the book? I think they're over there. Marked for the information as <coughs> issue six. Yes. As this is, um, I believe this is already in evidence uh, by the respondent submission. Thank you, Honor. Uh, Ms. Previs, if you would uh, turn to the um, page one. April 24, 2015. And the title on the page is Karst Mitigation Plan. Looking at the same thing I am? Yes. Right, thank you. If you turn to the uh, page 3 then, on the top right it should say page 3 of 31. reference that you've already talked there to, uh, sorry, I really should start the very bottom of page two. The sentence begins with the word just. It reads, just a few examples of Florida gas transmission multiple pipeline crossings of Santa Fe River, Swanee River in Florida, Southern Natural and Dixie pipeline crossings of Flint River in Georgia. And uh, in the interest of time, I, I jumped to that, but it's referring to um, to uh, areas, crushed areas where successful gas installation pipelines, successful at least in the eyes of the stable trail transmission in the uh, of this document, um, have occurred. Uh, so have you seen this course mitigation plan before? I have. Have you uh, worked uh, closely with it? By, by closely, I mean, is this something that you <clears throat> You've looked at it, or is this something you referred to repeatedly? I, I reviewed this and forwarded this to our karst experts for review. Did you read it when you received it? Yes. Did you read it from beginning to end, or just yes. get it? I read it. Oh. Were you uh, with <clears throat> DEP at um, Time of any of the installation of uh, already modifications to the installation of any of the pipelines mentioned in that sentence? Objection, yes. All out. Uh, <clears throat> and would you agree from your observation at least? Well, I'm sorry, what was the answer? Yes. <clears throat> Based on your knowledge of uh, incidents from the portions of those pipelines that are in Florida, uh, are you aware of any uh, problems uh, in relation to the karst terrain that they're on? Not aware of any problems. <clears throat> and if you may be familiar with the terrain in uh, Suwannee, uh, the Suwannee River, Somewhat. surrounding areas. I'm sorry, I, I Somewhat just, familiar. Somewhat familiar. Okay. Are you familiar with the uh, terrain at the Flint River? No. All right. Um, if we can turn back to uh, <clears throat> page 3. second paragraph uh, reads, avoidance was used as a primary mitigation measure during the planning and selection of the proposed alignment. Where avoidance is not feasible, the course features identified were further evaluated and mediation measures were developed. Okay, 
you take that to be a true statement, correct? I do. And if we lead a little further down, So read the whole sentence. In addition, field survey testing evaluations were conducted at each of the proposed above ground facilities, compressor and meter, meter stations, and horizontal directional drilling, HDD, locations to evaluate design and support of the proposed facilities of potential for sinkhole development. Response plans for sinkhole, depressions, or other cost related issues that may arise during construction operations of the project have also been prepared and have been included as part of the overall mitigation plan. Are you aware of those response plans for sinkholes and depressions? I'm aware that they're included in the cost mitigation plan, yes. Okay. Is that something that would not be reviewed by yourself? The plan was reviewed for technical purposes by our Florida Geological Survey. As part of DEP? As part of DEP. So, so I understand that your, your role. Um, so again, similarly here with sinkholes, well tell me Murray, are the sinkholes and cars handled the same way at DEP? The presence of sinkholes or the risk of sinkholes? If there were presence of sinkholes or car features, we would bring in experts in that area to review any potential impact. Would that be a, a, a state employee expert or a subcontract expert? State employee expert. Do you know if that was done uh, for the uh, area of the pipeline that crosses the Swanee River? It was. And do you know what the findings of the, the experts' findings were? The staff from FGS um, reviewed all the information in the file. Um, and, and determined that they had provided assurances that they met the criteria for issuance of the permit. Most apologies, last few words I lost. <coughs> okay, so it's so the Department of Power, Environmental Protection's position. Uh, how would you define the department's position with regard to the risk of sinkholes resulting from the installation of a pipeline of this size and distance? department staff, that we, we feel that they've provided reasonable assurance that the CARS features have been addressed. And by they, you refer to a Sandville Trail? Correct. <clears throat> Corroborated by the department's experts? Correct. So, in approving this permit, is it fair to say then, <clears throat> or would it be correct to say, that in approving the Approving the permit, the department is satisfied that the people affected, the people of Florida affected by the pipeline installation, um, are protected from sinkhole occurrence. Got to get these practical words in the witness's mouth. Who wants to ask an open-ended question to elicit what she thinks? That's entirely appropriate. Transmission pipeline application handled any different than other pipelines of division reviews? No. Are you familiar with the, uh, uh, the reference of outstanding Florida waters? Yes. Sir. What's your understanding of that use of that term? The classification of our water bodies under 62302 provides special protection for those. Is Suwannee River an outstanding water? It's an outstanding Florida waterway, yes. Uh, any other outstanding Florida waterways in the line of the pipeline, proposed line? The um, Santa Fe River and the Wittlacoochee South. Are you familiar with 63-302.700 Florida Administrative Code, right? Yes. <clears throat> so 
it, it reads in uh, paragraph one, it shall be the department policy to afford the highest protection to outstanding Florida waters and outstanding national resource waters. Now, no degradation of water quality other than that allowed in subsection 62-4.242.2 and parent three. FAC is to be permitted in outstanding Florida waters and outstanding national resource waters, respectively, notwithstanding any other department rules that allow water quality lowering. Those so are my, my first question with regard to uh, those two outstanding Florida waters, Santa Fe and Sewanee. Are there any department rules that allow water quality lowering? There, there was no allowances for this project to allow for water quality degradation. Uh, in that, you, you say that this permit was handled the same as all other permits. Is there a, a protocol to handle permits that meet the definition of 62-302.700 differently within the department? Well, they are handled separately or differently as they relate to water quality standards, which water quality standards apply to which water body you're crossing. So how, what, so was this then in fact treated differently, the same trail? Well, the Swanee River crossing doesn't in fact have any impacts to um, an outstanding Florida water because the directional drill commences in uplands and terminates in uplands. So there are no surface water impacts at that crossing that would affect the outstanding Florida water. And that's, that's the, the scope of the concern? Where the... At the Swanee. Okay, so at, at, at any outstanding Florida water, including the Swanee, the scope of water quality concern is only at the point of drilling? Well, any work within or, or could have adverse effects on the OFW is considered. In this case, there, we determined that there would be no impacts to the OFW. Okay, and, and that determination is based on, on what? that they are drilling from upland to upland and they have appropriate BMPs, best management practices in place to make sure that the turbidity doesn't flow downstream into the OFW. Are those best practices used in all projects? Is that like an industry standard? Yes, generally. So in the department's review, is there anything uh, different? And if not, uh, except there was an answer with regard to uh, the application is 62-302.700 with regard to the Swanee. There's nothing different than how we would review any other project. I have it with regard to Santa Fe. Same question. Same question. Um, the Santa Fe crossing has minimal areas of clearing adjacent to the Santa Fe River, which are part of the OFW. The wetlands adjacent are part of the OFW. But it's temporary in nature and those um, best management practices in that area will also be implemented to protect water quality. And so how do uh, citizens, do we interpret the term, it shall be the department's policy to afford the highest protection to OFWs? Objective, Your Honor. I mean, if we're starting to talk about interpreting statutes and rules, that's a legal function, that's not staff. <clears throat> just before from there, Your Honor, not from a legal perspective, but uh, from your operation code as an agency employee. Well, she's answered the question. She said, she said if it's outstanding Florida water, you cannot allow any degradation of the ambient water quality. Then she explained why they thought there would be no degradation. And, uh, that's a special requirement applicable to OFWs, and she told you how they thought they met it. Thank you, Your Honor. The uh, <coughs> same exhibit, Petitioners 5. 5 or 6. <clears throat> Thank you, Council 6. Turn please to uh, page five. <clears throat> when you first asked you were the presence of spring something that 
are considered in the application process at the EDP? Yes. Is that something that you uh, review or is that something that's handed to you by the other peer review? It depends on the nature of the project. Have you, uh, do you recall reference that the uh, uh, Were you present in the uh, hearing room yesterday? Yes. Do you recall a witness uh, by the name of Tom Edwards who claimed to be a landowner <coughs> of the Swan River and stated that they tested for springs within half a mile of his property? Yes. Is, do you recall reading within the course mitigation plan that springs are tested within a half mile of uh, a certain area? Objection. Tested? I don't know where they were. Uh, 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 discovered. Sold. Identified. Can you repeat the question? Yes. yes. Um, do you um, recall in your review of the course mitigation plan references to a distance at which the uh, pipeline company identifies the presence of springs within the uh, proposed radiation of their pipeline. I don't recall the exact distance that was mentioned. Is there a distance that DEP uh, has as a benchmark that it looks for? No. So if you review of an application said there was a spring within a half a mile as opposed to a quarter mile, would that mean anything to you? Depends on the, the project, what the impacts are. How about, um, okay. Can you give an example on different impacts that would result in a different application? Speculation. Why don't you confine it to this project? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Is there, if there's no benchmark at DEP as to a distance of a spring from a particular project, and let's say this project, the Sable Trail project, and let's say in a, um, in a, at this, near the Swanee River, along the Swanee River, this, uh, in, in the terrain that you've described before, in, was described as being somewhat parsed and there were presence of sinkholes. Mm -hmm. The identification of sinkholes and sinkhole activity within the proposed line is a, a uh, half a mile or a quarter mile apart. What does that information mean to, to DEP uh, in, as it's used in this course mitigation plan in Suwannee County? You know you've switched from springs to Did I switch? Um, I am sorry, springs. I'm on springs. I'm going to stay on springs. The presence of natural springs, within, be it a quarter mile or a half mile, what impact does that have on you as a reviewer of the application, charged with the duty to protect the citizenry of Florida and the affected members uh, along the corridor? What does the half mile versus quarter mile me too, if there's no benchmark. What, what other factors do you weigh? Like? We, we rely on, in this case, we would rely on reasonable scientific judgment of the expert in the area to make a determination of what distance was appropriate to review. Right, so the experts in the area, again, we're referring to the DEP FGS, experts? Yes. FGS as part of DEP. So, so if there's a reference that says there's no springs within a, 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 a quarter of a mile, is an expert dispatched by the department to determine if that's a proper measurement as opposed to one mile? Yes. Do you know if it was done in Suwannee County with regard to this project? I believe they did set a distance for, for Sable Trail to look at. And do you know if they um, found a half mile or a quarter mile to be? I don't know the exact. I might finish the question, though. 
they, they know if they found that a quarter mile or a half mile to be um, acceptable measurement. I know they found a distance to be acceptable. I'm not sure if the exact distance. All right. So if I understand correctly, the division, the department rather, found that the distance used by Sable Trail and its mitigation plan were acceptable distances to measure from. Correct. You can recall an instance in your 19 years where that was not found to be the case, where a geologist went out and said we need to measure for further from a proposed project? I'm not aware of any other instances. Do you know why the geologist was dispatched in this instance? So when it states in the course mitigation plan that they've measured a a half mile, would that be a half mile on each side of the corridor line? Jackson, Your Honor, the document speaks for itself. That she can't interpret what the document means. Hmm. One thing I want to avoid, Mr. Wells, for is you finally getting a geologist on the stand and you want to ask all these same questions again. I don't, want, I don't want that to happen. If this isn't the best witness to answer your questions, then you should not ask them for this witness. You are right. I'm she's the, she's mm -hmm. had a supervisory role with regard to some of the specialty areas that were applied to the permit review. I understand, Your Honor, but the, the, the scope of my question is not the, the geo science that this witness has, but what the state of Florida is doing to protect the citizens who are affected by the proposed pipeline. And this is the person, one of the people who have approved it, and this is a witness proffered by the, um, the prima facie case, and I'm trying to determine what the state does for its citizenry. Uh, and if the witness doesn't know, I understand that, I understand that. So that we don't ask the same questions, uh, uh, counsel to my left is that the was the experts and not the geologists that we report to be experts, but I'm really curious to find out the level that the state applies. I, I think it's significant for the court to know, for the record to reflect. Well, let's what start with noticed. her basic answer. You know, she's answering your question in the way she can. She, she, one of her answers was that they look to see whether what the impact there is, what, what will be impacted by the proposed project. All right, now you're asking in essence, um, what is the right distance to look away from the project for possible impact? And, uh, but you're coming at it in so many indirect ways, I think it's confusing. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm really not asking what the right distance is of this witness, I'm trying to ask I'm trying to determine and present to the, to the court what the witness um, criteria is used. And if, if she doesn't use distances, then she relies on other people's distances. I think that <coughs> that has uh, uh, been, been elicited. Um, but I am curious about the last question, if, uh, if the witness knows whether or not that half mile is measured from the <coughs> center line or not. And if she doesn't know, she doesn't know. Did you even say it was a half mile? Quarter mile? Half mile? Yeah, I think it did say half mile. So this is the problem. You're getting these... This witness is struggling to find some way to give you some of your answer, and she's not able to answer well uh, the way you're, you're asking. But uh, if she... You know, that quite, we'll ask that question, uh, Ms. Prather. Whatever the distance is, some distance was, was used as a, uh, to guide the investigation. What was it measured from? I believe it was measured from the center line of the pipeline and the radiance around the project buffer. All right. Uh, may I proceed? Yes. Thank you.
the department, Ms. Prithers, apply a uh, public interest analysis when doing its application review? Yes. And what criteria is that based upon? The criteria are listed in the 373 and 62330. Uh, <coughs> uh, 373? Three, yes. And, and, and 6233. 63. And um, any particular uh, portion of 373? Uh, part 4, 373. And it looks to the Florida Constitution as well, right? Objection, Your Honor. The Florida Constitution is not one of the permitting criteria. As the court well knows, the criteria for determining whether the ERP should be uh, issued or denied is based upon the rules the department has adopted to implement the ERP program. Those are the only things that are relevant. If the Department of Environmental Protection does not look at the provisions of the Constitution about sovereign lands and protecting the resources, then I'll accept that as an answer. The, it is the Florida Constitution that gives the legislature body the power to have such an agency. So it certainly is controlled and it's certainly cited in the three minute petition. Well, this is all legal argument, and this is not a lawyer on the witness stand, but uh, she does apply. Um, she is responsible for applying laws to the permit applications, as you said, 373 Part 4 and, six, and uh, Rule 62-330. Ms. Prather, do, does the staff ever pull out the Constitution in their application, their review of applications? No. Okay, that's your answer. Do you have a copy of 373.41 the witness? Familiar with 373.414, is that right? Yes. And you, uh, you answered questions yesterday on the roads regarding considerations in 373.414 when granting this application. Is that correct? Correct. And I think you were, correct me if I'm wrong, generally asked if um, exactly that. Did and does look to it and that those requirements were met. If, if, if you will, I want to ask a little bit um, about how those um, criteria is evaluated for reasonable assurance that such activity on over surface water wetlands is not contrary to public interest. The uh, criteria provided is enumerated in the statute. I'm sure you're very familiar with it. The, uh, under section 1A1. Do you need a copy of the statute? Would you sure. like a copy of the statute? Yes. We're going to ask your questions. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the uh, criteria of public interest uh, the department looks to, my understanding. Uh, item 1, A, determining whether an activity which is on or over surface water or wetlands as delineated in 373.421, parent 1, is regulated under this part. It's not contrary to the public interest or is clearly in the public interest. The governing board or the department shall consider and balance the following criteria. Um, so my first question, are, are you, if you know, um, Are the, um, the water surface of wetlands that run uh, at or near the proposed pipeline, 
uh, the type delineated in Section 373.4211? Yes. Oh. So this would apply then, correct? Correct. Based on your uh, understanding. All right, so one is whether the activity will adversely affect the public health, safety, or welfare of the property of others. In, and it was determined that it, that it, um, that it will not have actually effect, is that correct? Correct. All right. How does the, the uh, department make that determination? What goes into it? It depends on the nature of the activity, what factors we evaluate. Okay. And, and, um, besides factors, do you, what, what, what factors were evaluated? In this case, um, we evaluated the um, any impacts that would affect public health safety. We found that there were none. The, the, the considerations under the section, there were none that would, were negative. We were found to have adverse impacts. All right. Um, okay, what else? Anything else? Any uh, contact with um, any of the uh, residents that live along the trail? We did have contact with anybody who called with questions about the um, There was a public uh, meeting, sort of, is that true? Not held by the department. So, I, and I really apologize, I didn't fully hear your answer. I'm not <laughs> trying to uh, ask you to repeat yourself for no important reason. I could ask the court reporter, but your response, again, the factors that were considered? The factor, generally, it, it, for this case, we found that there were no adverse impacts to the public health, safety, or welfare of others. Right, and what factors were considered to reach that conclusion? Well, there were no public health impacts. There are no safety concerns <coughs> about the pipeline. And there's uh, no impacts to the welfare of the That conclusion based based on the um, on the, the karst mitigation plan? Oh, certainly the karst mitigation plan is taken into consideration when we look at the public interest. Yeah, so uh, is everything in the application Submitted by the applicant, taken into consideration. Yes. Is what's taken into consideration that's not in the application, if anything? Um, you are a staff member's personal experiences um, with permitting projects like this may come into consideration just on a staff level, but literature review as far as um, wetland species impacts. Is there an opportunity, if there's not a public meeting, is there uh, any notices to the public that can weigh in on, on this factor to know that the window for consideration is open, that's just an application filed? The, the department provided a notice of application on our website. Department provided notice of the adjacent property owner within 500 feet for the state lands crossing. And the department issued a notice of intent which required a public notice of the intent to issue. Did any of those uh, homeowners within five, um, landowners within 500 feet, uh, make any contact that you're aware of with the department? One property owner. We move on to the uh, second criteria, whether the activity will adversely affect the conservation of fish and wildlife, including endangered or threatened species or their habitats. Um, it was found to not adversely affect, is that correct? Correct. Um, are you aware of, um, did you, any reports submitted to you make the purpose any endangered species? Yes. What, what species are those? There's an entire list of endangered species that could potentially um, be found along the project route. Okay. And what factors were considered to uh, reach the conclusion that none of the species on that entire list were would be adversely affected? 
we relied upon input from the Board of Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, who provided um, a letter with permit conditions to be included in the permit. Is that a division part of DEP? No. It used to be? It used a long time ago, it may have been. All right, I'm any. Not any sure. What about the, uh, you must have seen some reference, I'll ask you differently, have you seen any references to um, excessive use of groundwater in, in the drilling and testing the pipeline? I'm not. On uh, three, have a, uh, the question is whether the activity will adversely affect navigation or the flow of water or cause harmful erosion or shoaling? Can you describe uh, what shoaling means? Shoaling uh, would be um, if you had um, changes to the flow of water where um, sedimentation would occur on other areas downstream. And now, uh, okay. And the department is satisfied that the activity along this uh, more than uh, 180 miles, let's say, in the northern portion of the 36 diameter installation will not create any erosion or shoaling to the extent that it would adversely affect the people affected by the Correct. construction. Okay, that's notwithstanding uh, all reports submitted to the department. I don't understand what you mean. Uh, taking everything submitted to the department has been considered in reaching that conclusion. Yes. And, and again, can you identify what was submitted aside from submissions by the applicant with regard to erosion and shoaling? Nothing. I move on to number four. Whether the activity will adversely affect the fishing or recreational values of marine productivity in the vicinity of the activity. Uh, again, your uh, department satisfied that there will be no adverse effect on the fishing or recreational values of marine productivity? Correct. Has there been any evidence uh, presented to the department that the risk of such adversity could be irreparable? Not Do you know what uh, was taken into consideration beside the information contained in the application by the applicant with regard to fishing and recreational values of marine productivity and how it may be affected by the installation of this pipeline? I, I don't think that there was anything under that category that was considered other than what was provided by the applicant. Thank you. And uh, criteria five, whether the activity will be of a temporary or permanent nature. What was the conclusion on that? Most of the activities are temporary in nature. What's above ground that would cause impacts is temporary in nature. So that, that is a factor when we... Mm -hmm. Okay, so the activity that is it's used in three... Seven, well, I'm sorry, you, your understanding of the use of activity in criteria number five uh, is the constructive act, construction activity? Is that an accurate statement? Yes, the construction and operation. And operation. And the operation is perpetual, is that correct? Correct. There's no end, and there's no end date as far as the department knows. Correct. Okay. So would that make it permanent in nature? Uh, the, the pipeline itself is permanent in nature. However, the impacts associated with it um, are temporary or mitigated for. Six is whether the activity will adversely affect or will enhance significant historic or archaeological resources under provisions of 267.061. You were present yesterday when a cultural resource expert was here, is that correct? It was. And the uh, cultural resource expert identified uh, certain areas to be uh, protected, is that correct? Correct. Uh, do you recall the cultural resource expert saying that uh, dead head logs were not in his purview? I don't recall that. Right. Do you know if the DEP has any 
oversight of dead headlock below the water line. And were the presence of dead headlocks considered uh, when looking at this application for the Sable Trail pipeline? No, because the pipeline's going under the rivers. So the logs are laying at the bottom of the river. Pipe on to be 40 to 50 feet below the river. Right, but it's got to be drilled and bored, et cetera. Well, it does, but the, the logs lay at the bottom of the river, not below 50 feet below the bottom of the river. Again, and item seven is the last item. The current condition and relative value of functions being performed by areas affected by the proposed activity. What's that mean to you? Um, we, we evaluate during our um, our process, during the mitigation assessment, we, we do score wetlands on their current condition and relative value, and that comes into play during a, the mitigation assessment. The DP concluded that the presence of this uh, Pipeline from Georgia to Orlando is not going to uh, weigh in on a relative value in functions of areas crosses? They do have impacts to the current condition, however, those impacts were mitigated for. What type of impact do you refer to that was mitigated? Um, conversion of forest systems to herbaceous systems, and there is some fill in the application of wetlands. You know how much fill of wetlands? I'm, I'm thinking it was around eight acres. Eight acres? Permanent fill. Is that eight acres of one location or several locations? Several locations. In total, that would be split up amongst several locations. Why not more? Objections around. How does she know why not more? Well, was, was there, what it is. Yeah, okay. Was there any, uh, how, how was, was there any recommendation for more or less? Uh, they originally came in with more in certain sections and we recommended less and they modified their project. I understand correctly that the uh, Table Trail recommended more wetland uh, replacement acreage and the department recommended less? No. The original proposal included more wetland impacts after um, going through the reduction and elimination of impacts process, they decided to reduce wetland impacts. I got you. Thank you. And um, is that correct to understand that uh, you stated uh, earlier today that you weren't sure whether this, Chrysler, this pipeline crosses any other, other pipelines? Yes, I'm not sure. Okay. I have nothing further for Ms. Bradford. Thank you. Ms. Braver, uh, you indicated you're a biologist, right? Yes. And are there uh, other disciplines that uh, work with you in reviewing the pipeline uh, permit application? Yes, there are. And did you rely upon other disciplines to evaluate matters within the scope of their discipline? Yes. In terms of uh, materials that you re reviewed and considered, you received a lot of materials from Sable Trail, is that correct? That's correct. When you get engineering drawings and other engineering information from applicants, are they required to be signed by a professional engineer? Yes, they are. And if you get geological reports, from um, the applicant or others, are they required to be sealed by a professional geologist? Yes. When, when you get those reports uh, outside of your scope of expertise, um, are they provided to the uh, discipline, again, that would be the, ex the agency experts on that to review? Yes. So you just don't take their word for everything. Okay. Verified. So, for example, you indicated yesterday, and I think today as well, that uh, whenever um, a wetland delineation was proffered to the department, 
you and others went out and verified that the delineation was correct. <coughs> And the same for the UMAM scores that we discussed yesterday. That's within your area of expertise, correct? Correct. And with respect to the data that was submitted by Sable Trail and every other applicant that we deal with, those pieces of information were verified in the field by you and your team. Correct. Is that correct? I believe about uh, whether or not you had heard Mr. Edwards testify about springs on his property. Do you recall that yes. question? And you, you previously testified here that you received some materials from him, is that correct? That's correct. And what did you do with those materials? I forwarded them to our FGS staff and to Sable Trail. Do you, do you know whether one of the FGF staff actually went out in the field to verify location of springs or whether they used, used databases? I don't know if they went out in the field. I, I know they used databases. You were asked a number of um, questions concerning the criteria for the public interest test. You recall that sort of recall again? Yes. And um, you were asked whether or not the um, proposed project, project will adversely affect conservation of fish and wildlife. You remember that? Yes. And it's true, isn't it, that in terms of that evaluation that Florida Fish and Wildlife provided you the information necessary to assure that they were not adversely affected? That's correct. When you're um, drilling under a river, uh, are you likely to adversely affect the navigation of that river? No. Are you likely to create shoaling of the river? No. Are you likely to adversely affect fishing in the river? Are they likely to affect recreational values of the river? No. So in, in reviewing these applications um, for permits, <coughs> you rely on your own pro professional judgment, 19 years of experience to evaluate them? Yes. And you rely on other experts in the fields to evaluate them? Yes. Ultimately, is it you that makes the decision about whether or not reasonable assurance has been provided? Yes. Okay. And with respect to this project, did you do that? I did. And what was your determination? That reasonable assurance has been provided that they met the conditions for issuance of a permit. Okay. Um, minor court in the record if you would turn to exhibit 10 volume 12 exhibit 10 should be tab 10 okay. and page one yes. if you would uh, look down at that and uh, tell me uh, what the diameter of the hunters creek uh, segment of the pipeline is. Uh, three is 36 inches. Okay. 
Okay, and then what is Citrus County? Twenty-four. Okay. You were asking questions about elimination of impacts, reduction in elimination of impacts. Is an applicant required to elim eliminate all impacts? Okay. And when you say practical, practicable, what, what, or what do you look at to determine that? We, we look at um, mod modifications to the project, where it could, the project itself can still be done, um, just minimizing those impacts. So an applicant is not required to fundamentally change the project in order to be discontested. Are you aware of any um, portion of this project that will adversely affect the property of others? I'm not. Thank you. I don't have any further questions. One question, Your Honor. 19 years with the department, 17 years reviewing ERPs. Can you estimate how many ERPs you've reviewed? Um, probably 2,000. Thank you. No further questions. Nothing. Second five minutes.